Hi, I'm Michael, and this is my new Roland Monofab SRM20 desktop milling machine. I'm going to use it to make new electric key fobs for the members of the Makerspace. Alright, so at the Makerspace, we use two different types of electronic key fobs, but it's kind of a pain to have two different keys, so we're going to make one key fob that encompasses both. In addition to looking much cooler and being more convenient, these new fobs are also going to be substantially more durable than the existing plastic ones. Also, I'm putting two keys into one, but this would be just as cool a project with a singular fob too. Now we have access to it, but it's glued to the inside of the key fob. So to get that out, I'm just going to carefully heat it in the heat gun and then use my tweezers to gently lift it out, trying not to break the connection on the board. You have a copper coil that is basically like an antenna that's connected to this little microchip here by two very thin copper strands. So the thing that you need to try to not break are the two very thin copper strands. They're pretty inexpensive, so if you do break it, just grab a new one and go again. Did not work. Something worth noting here is that I have an RFID scanner and I'm periodically checking to make sure the electronics are continuing to work properly as I go throughout this process. And repeat. So the only thing that's important to remember if you're using two different types of chips in the same keychain, is that the little circuit boards cannot be anywhere near each other, or one of them won't work. So you need to position it something like that. So we're starting by making them more delicate than what they came in, but that's why we're gonna use resin in the final keychain to add a lot of durability, and the final product will be far better than what we started with. You'll be able to run a tank over these things. I'm squaring off a piece of salvaged mulberry wood as my base, measuring it and inputting it into V-Carve. To secure this to the base of the Monofab machine, I'm using a sticky tape. Brooke also designed a removable acrylic wasteboard. You can absolutely use the wasteboard as is, but we figured why not add an extra layer to the machine. The files for this are available on makersworkshop.com. And then I went in with my first carve. This is hollowing out a pocket about two thirds of the way into the mulberry. The next carve is a very shallow ledge for the electronics to sit in. These are very, very delicate at this point, so to keep them from floating in the resin, I'm using CA glue. Next, I'm pouring Total Boat High Performance Epoxy with a fast hardener over this. I colored it black with charcoal powder. Alright, it's fast hardener, so it's gonna set up pretty fast. I'm leaving it there because it's gonna get extra hot and extra bubbly if I go for it than that. And so I'll do the second bit as a second pour in about probably 30 minutes. I did the second pour when the first pour hit gel phase. Once this had completely hardened, I did my third cut on the milling machine, a planing pass. Mm -hmm. 
I changed to a V-bit for the fourth pass to carve the logo into the hardened resin. And then I grabbed some Total Boat UV resin to color with white pigment and dabbed it into the logo. UV resin is great for shallow pores like this because after just two minutes under the UV light, this completely hardened. And I could run carve number five, another planing pass to finish off the look. Everything was working exactly as I had hoped, so I went ahead and ran the final cut, cut number six, to cut out our key fall. And then I finished this off with a sand and a coat of Osmo. Osmo is a durable floor finish, so I thought it would be a great choice on a key fob that'll see some wear and tear. Now, let's see if it still works after being run over. 